Real estate is a numbers game. As an investor, I spend most of my time looking at deals. During this process, 90% of the opportunities that come across my desk, I reject. And the number one reason is pricing. Most deals are simply too expensive for the return they offer. But what does this mean exactly? How do we know when a deal offers the right return or if the risk reward ratio is adequate? In this post, we're going to look at the metrics that I most commonly use in my real estate business to answer this question. These metrics are meant for real estate development. For income producing properties, I use a slightly different set of metrics, but that's for another post. The first metric is an obvious one and one of the most commonly used by investors, the internal rate of return. Any investment where there is a cash flow present and that includes all securities except commodities and currencies, the metric used for analysis will most likely be the internal rate of return. The main benefit of IRR is that it allows you to compare otherwise very different projects with a single metric. For example, you may use IRR to compare a real estate project with a leveraged buyout of a company. IRR is a very popular metric, and therein lies its main advantage. The fact it is so popularly used makes it very easy to communicate in financial terms and draw comparisons between asset classes. So what does IRR measure? It measures, fundamentally, profit and time. This metric is easy and intuitive when you have a single cash outflow at time zero and a single cash inflow at the end of a full year. If you invest 100 euros at the end of 2020 and get back your initial investment, plus a profit of 20 euros at the end of 2021, you have earned exactly a 20% return. If, instead of 2021, you get your capital plus profit back at the end of 2022, you have earned a 9.5% annual return. In this last example, the fact it is less than 10%, is the result of compounding. But if your cash flow timing is mid-year, say in May 2022, your return is 13.8%. The increased return from 9.5 to 13.8% is the result of the shorter timing of your investment. Here is the time value of money at play. The problem with IOR, and this is where it breaks down as a financial metric, is that it does not necessarily translate into a measure of profit in euros or dollars. As with our previous examples, the total profit of 20 euros is the same regardless of when you get it paid back. What IRR does capture is the essence of time. For a measure of profit, we have to look at our next metric. Metric number two is the equity multiple, which is the ratio of the total distributed profits to the equity invested. A multiple of two means I double my equity through an investment. I like the equity multiple because it provides a direct measure of profit, which is something the IR doesn't. However, the multiple does not capture the effect of time, which IR does. Equity multiples and IRs complement each other very well. One problem that I see with equity multiples is that it tends to lead developers to put on excessive debt on a project exposing the investment to a higher potential for loss in case of a downturn. That's when the third metric comes into the mix. The final metric that I use on a day-to-day basis is the sales margin, which I calculate as the earnings before taxes over net sales. Net sales is the sales of the project minus the marketing and sales commission costs incurred. What the sales margin captures is the level of cushion or comfort level of the investment. It is the inverse of riskiness. The higher the sales margin, the more that sales can drop before you lose money on the investment. I perform the calculation after debt service because it is important to incorporate the cost of debt into the equation, especially if we have put on a large amount of debt on the property or if this debt is very expensive. If our sales margin is a meager 2%, you'll have almost no room to absorb a cost overrun of the project or make any adjustments to pricing in order to accelerate sales. Also, the calculation should be performed before tax because tax is a variable expense, as it only applies if there is profit. No profit, no tax. Let's put everything into perspective. These three metrics put together 
IRR, equity multiple, and sales margin capture the most important aspects of any real estate development project. The return of our investment, time, and our cushion. They each need to work independently for the investment to make sense. You can have a project that returns very quickly and will therefore yield a high RR, and maybe it provides for an adequate multiple and a low sales margin. When this happens, the cause is likely to be high leverage as opposed to good old financial profits. I'm all for some financial engineering, but only as a means to enhance profits. They cannot correct an otherwise bad investment. You can also have the opposite situation, an adequate IR, but a low multiple and a high sales margin. This normally happens when you're too considerate with your debt assumptions, which means it's time to gear up and start calling up some banks and debt funds. What metrics do I look for in my business? As a general rule, for a real estate development project, I'll be looking out for the 20-20 rule. 20% IRs, 2x equity multiples, and 20% margins. I may be inclined on bending these rules a bit, depending on where the market is headed. During the early stages of a bull market, I may settle for a 15% sales margin, confident that prices are likely to go up over time. During market downturns, I'll be more comfortable with a 25% sales margin in order to have a greater cushion with which to absorb a potential blow. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and hit like. You may also find interesting an online course that I've put together called Professional Real Estate Investing, where I have in-depth discussions of what it's like to invest in real estate and where we go into topics such as the market cycle, inflation, storytelling, and financial analysis, and where we also have a close look at a case study of an income-producing property, complete with a full working professional model. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more tutorials on real estate investing.